In this class, we're studying motion, and there are two basic areas of the study of motion. The first is kinematics. So kinematics is a description of motion. So we want to describe how things move. The other half of um, the study of motion is explaining why things move the way they do, and that part is called dynamics. So dynamics is the explanation of why things move. So we're starting with kinematics. We're going to develop a bunch of tools for talking about motion. Um, and then later in the course, we'll talk about dynamics, which will include things like forces and energy and momentum and that sort of thing. OK, so for kinematics, if we want to describe how things are moving, the place to start is with the most basic descriptions of motion. So the most basic sorts of things we can wonder about uh, uh, motion are where and when. And there are multiple different ways to approach the question of describing where some motion took place. So um, one thing that you might do is you might describe a position. So you could say, for instance, that an object was in one exact position at one time, and then at another time it was in a different position. Okay, so um, there are a variety of ways that we can explain what position an object is in. For instance, we could give some coordinates for where it is located. Um, for instance, we could do something like um, 43 degrees north and 167 degrees west, and that describes an exact position on the planet Earth. Or um, in a more you know, simple explanation in a lab or in a homework problem, we might just say that an object starts out at x equals 0, and then later it's at x equals 3.0 meters, just to describe in some um, framework where this object is located. We don't have to use coordinates, though. We could also use a named location or, say, a relative location. Maybe you're exactly three kilometers east of Redmond or something like that. Um, there are a lot of ways to describe a position. Um, another way to talk about where emotion takes place, though, is we can describe the motion overall instead of a specific point in time. So, for example, we could talk about a displacement. And a displacement is the difference between two positions. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I describe my commute from home to work, for instance, I live in Redmond to drive to Bellevue. So I could say I went eight miles south. And that would be an explanation of the displacement that I went for my morning commute. OK, so notice I both talked about how far it was and also which direction I went. That's what makes it a displacement. Now, a lot of times we don't describe the direction. We would just say I went eight miles. And if you do that, that's called a distance. So the distance is the length of a straight line connecting two points. So for example, that might be something like eight miles. Okay. Now, when I say eight miles, what I really mean, and you probably assume this, is that like that was the length of the path that I followed. The actual distance might be some other amount, maybe six or seven miles. So um, really, the distance should be that other amount. But I could talk about instead the um, actual length of the circuitous path that I followed. Um, and that would be a path length. So the path length is the thing that your car's odometer reads. It's the actual distance that an object followed along whatever path. So I'm not even going to write an explanation because I think path length is relatively intuitive. Um, OK, so those are the ways that we can answer where. There are a couple of other you know, maybe slight differences that it would be possible to carve out, but these are going to be the ones that we use in this class. Mostly position and displacement will be the most important. Um, to answer when a motion takes place, there is a little um, less of an ambiguity there. So one thing we can talk about is the time. So the time is what a clock reads. So I could say, for instance, I left home at 7.30 AM. And that's a time. OK, so nothing too fancy about that. Now, what we often are actually interested in is something more like, it took me 25 minutes to get to work. So that is what is called a time interval. Um, so you might think of that as an amount of time. So that would be something like 25 minutes. OK, so essentially, that's a difference between two times. I could say from 7.30 to 7.55, or I could just say that it took 25 minutes. OK, so these six terms are things that you'll want to um, keep track of. You don't want to get confused when I use one term versus another. We will talk about these more in the next video, though.